Hello everyone and welcome to the statistics class. This is our first lecture. Hope you enjoy it and also hope you enjoyed the intro. What is a statistics? What do you know about a statistics? Or what do you think a statistics is about? Try to answer this question as if I could really hear you. I'll pause for a moment. The statistics is a branch of mathematics that takes numbers, data, and transforms them into useful information. That is very interesting. So a statistics is like a tool that takes in input, numbers and data generally and then transform them, process, work on them, analyze them, and then transform them into information that are useful and we understand them. What else? Methods for processing and analyzing data. What else? Methods for helping reduce uncertainty inherent in decision making. As you may know, there is nothing certain about the world but uncertainty. There is uncertainty in everything. And it's, it is very important for everyone, especially for managers in businesses, to use tools that helps them to make better decisions on their uncertainty. And statistics is one of those tools, one of the more important ones. The statistics. Where does the name of the subject the statistics come from? Hmm. So it's not a random name, a random word. It really means something. Well, actually, yes. I will tell you later in this lecture what this word really means and where it has come from. So what is going to be in this statistic course? In this course, we're going to talk about three major topics. The first one is called descriptive statistics, which as the name suggests, it's a set of tools or methods that help us describe data. Suppose you are given a big bulk of data, like gigabytes of data. And you want to tell your boss what does data tell you, talk about. So descriptive statistics actually is the tool to go to. The next big topic, which is very interesting actually and fun, is probability discussion. So we're going to learn about the concept of probability and how to compute probabilities. So we're going to learn um, about different probabilities how to actually compute the probabilities in difficult situations. So we're going to learn about um, a set of rules, um, such as counting rules, that's going to help you to compute probabilities in challenging situations. Also, we're going to learn about probability distributions, such as discrete probability distribution and continuous probability distributions. Don't worry about now about the discrete and continuous and what do they mean. We're going to learn it through the course. Just be patient. And the next big topic, major topic in statistics, which is actually an advanced, more advanced one, is what is called as inferential statistics. So basically, in inferential statistics, we're going to talk about sampling and population. So we're going to learn how to actually, what is the proper way of sampling out of a population and how to use actually those sampling to make an estimation for our population parameters. So we're going to learn about point estimation and also we're going to learn about confidence interval estimation. And finally, last but not the least, the best way to learn statistics as a branch of mathematics 
is to do as many examples and practice problems and problems as possible. That's why we're going to have a lot of examples and problems that's going to be challenging to you, but it's going to help you to master the subject of the statistics. Let's now learn about some basic and important terminology in statistics. In statistics, we are interested in learning and studying about a group of things, a group of people, a group of animals, a group of items, a group of anything. The whole group of those things that you are interested in studying, in statistics, it's called population. But in real life, because of a lot of restriction that we're going to learn later on, we cannot afford to study the whole group, which is the population. So what we do in a statistics is to instead take a portion of the population, a subgroup of the population, and study those. That in a statistics is called a sample. We're going to learn actually the proper way of sampling in a statistics later on in the course. When I say that we want to study a group of things in a statistics, what I really mean is that we want to study the characteristics of those things in the group or the population. So for example, say we want to study our student in class. What can we study about them? We can study about their age, about their gender, about their weight, about where they come from, about their major, eye color, anything, any characteristics about those students can be studied. Right? And those characteristics can vary from a student to a student. The weight of each student can be different. The height of each student can be different. The eye color of each student can be different. The major of a student can be different, right? That's why it, it varies, right? So that's why in a statistics, we call that a variable. So a variable is just a characteristics that we want to study. So when we identify what characteristic or what variable we want to study about a population, the next step actually is to gather those information about the variable. That is called data in a statistics. We use certain measures, numerical measures, to describe characteristics of a group that we want to study. You are actually already familiar with one of those measures, the average. There are other measures that we're gonna learn more later on. When we study a population, those measures that are used to describe the characteristics of the population are called a parameter. When we study a sample, those measures are called statistics. Aha! Uh -huh. This is actually the word the statistics come from in the subject of statistics. Population versus sample. What is a population? Let's recap. So a population is the whole group of those that we want to study. The measures that are used to describe the population, or specifically the population characteristics, are called parameters. Unfortunately, we usually cannot afford to study the population. So what we do in a statistics is to study a subgroup of the population, which is called a sample. The measures that are used to describe the sample are called statistics, which is also happened to be the name of the course, and that's not an actually accident. That shows how important statistics are, because 
we are not actually really interested in studying the sample. We want to study the population and the parameters, but we cannot afford it. So what we do is we take the sample, we study the sample and learn about the statistics to make the conclusion about parameters, to infer about the parameters. That is very important. Types of statistics. So statistics is just a branch of mathematics that are used to transform data into information that we can use. There are two major types of statistics. The first one is called descriptive statistics. The descriptive statistics include the whole process of collecting gathering data, summarizing data, and use some measures to describe the data. The basic goal here is how to use only a few measures, a few tools to describe the whole data. For example, we, we can use graphs, we can use measures such as central tendency measures, average for example, to describe the whole data. The next type of statistics, which is a more advanced and important statistics, is called inferential statistics. And that includes methods for drawing conclusion, making conclusion or inferences about the whole population and the population parameters based on the sample. Descriptive statistics. Let's learn more about descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics include collecting and gathering the data because data is very important in statistics. Data is everything in statistics. With no data, we cannot do anything. So how can we actually collect and gather data? Well, we can do a survey but there are a lot of other ways that we can gather and collect data. We actually are not short of the tools and methods to gather and collect data in today's world. We have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Twitter, we have Amazon. There are all other companies that collect data. Every purchases that we make, every transaction that we do, every site that we visit, all of these information and data are collected. What else? The next step is cleaning organ and organizing, graphing the data. That is a very important step to do. Also very time consuming. What next? Summarizing the data. So after we have collected all this data and we have cleaned them, organized them and graphed them, we have a general sense of what the data tells us. What we want to do is we want to summarize the data because data can be huge. We can have actually gigabytes of data. Imagine that. Imagine that you have gigabytes, terabytes of data. That's a lot of data. So how do you want to actually make sense or gather information of data? Summarizing the data is the way to go. So we want to use actually just a few measures, a few tools, a few methods to talk about the data. For example, we can use average or mean. Mean and average are the same in a statistics to summarize the data. Inferential statistics. What is inferential statistics is about? It's about drawing conclusion and make inferences for the population based on a sample. For example, suppose we want to study a population average. Specifically, we are interested in studying the average population. 
what we can do is we can take a sample and make an estimation for the average of the population based on the average of the sample that is called estimation the next thing is hypothesis testing what is a hypothesis a hypothesis is just an unverified claim suppose someone has made a claim that the average population weight is 120 pounds we don't know if that's true so we want to verify that and the statistics specifically inferential statistics gives us the tool to do that hypothesis testing so inferential statistics is all about drawing a conclusion about a large population based on a sample which is a smaller and you can afford to study it types of variables and data in statistics we have different types of variables and data we have what is called categorical variable data such as marital status so one can be single or married political party one can be a republican a democrat or any other parties eye color so these are defined categories that cannot be represented by numbers right what else can you think about categorical data or variable for example a student major so a student can be economics major management major finance marketing mis or any other majors these are categories that cannot be represented by numbers so we also have the other types of variables and data that can be represented by numbers these are called numerical variables or data we actually have two types of numerical variables we have discrete ones which are whole numbers for example number of children so one can have zero children one children two children three children etc etc but you cannot have 2.3 children no decimals right it has to be the whole number so it's discrete what other example the number of defects items per hour a machine produce what other example can you think about for example the number of classes or courses that you are registered in you can have zero one two three four five right but you cannot have 5.5 so this has to be a whole number no decimal we have the other types of numerical variables that are continuous so such as weight height length voltage right so these are the types of variables that can be actually any other any numbers so the height can be 120.68999 right it can be any number it can have decimals 